will be holding now, waiting for weather to clear. If you tuned in to the afternoon news on October 17th, 1989, you'd have learned the launch of the shuttle had been scrubbed, that a 641 pound pumpkin had been grown, and that people were filing into Candlestick Park for game three of the World Series. It was 5.04 p.m. No one could tell the most powerful Bay Area quake since 1906 was about to strike. In the Santa Cruz Mountains, 59,000 feet below Summit Road, 200 square miles of rock fractures. The initial boom. Just boom. And all of a sudden, we saw the earth crack, and it came from that way. And it opened up pretty wide, almost three feet. West of the fault, the mountains lift a foot and a half. A mirror fell over, the speakers fell over, the record fell over. And it just kept coming, and it kept coming, and it kept coming again. For second place. Three seconds after the rupture, the seismic waves hit Santa Cruz. The ground motion with this quake as strong as what was felt here in 1906. 21 old brick buildings sitting on a floodplain all collapsed downtown. Highway 1 buckles and folds. Its supporting posts punch through the surface. In Watsonville, 250 houses are thrown off their foundation. At the edge of town, a million apples fall from trees. On the other side of the mountains, the waves race up the peninsula at a speed of more than three miles a second. At Candlestick Park, the pilot of a blimp swears he feels four distinct bumps. So the Oakland A's take, take, hey, well, we have we are... By the time Al Michaels felt the quake, 11 people were dead. Six more are about to die at 6th and Bluxham. Oh my God, we're having an earthquake. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Now, 56 miles from the epicenter, 20 seconds after the Earth snapped. Can you feel that? The waves amplify, and the 165 acres of the former salt lagoon the marina is built on. There go the lights. Oh, We have a major fire burning in San Francisco's marina district. It started at the northeast corner of Beach and to visit Zero Street. 27 fires break out in the city. There's a gas leak. Let's go. Turn around. 6,300 buildings in the city will be destroyed or seriously damaged. There are right now maybe five cars that are, that are covered with debris. At the moment the seismic waves hit the city. One of the bridges, they didn't say which one collapsed. Ah! By the time the 500-ton roadbed smashes onto the lower deck. I could look through the river mirror and see the bridge giving about a quarter of a mile behind me. California's first continuous double-decker freeway begins to collapse. That is completely collapsed. That's the upper section collapsing into the lower section. The structure and the mud it's planted in vibrate at the same frequency, amplifying the motion 800%. The freeway was rolling and humping and jumping, and the cars were falling down, and the, the dust was flying. The everywhere. dust was People going all over, the rocks trailing. were flying, okay. People. Everybody aboard an airport shuttle bus is crushed. 42 people are dead in an instant. Incredibly, a pickup was crushed to a height of 30 inches, but the man inside, this man, survives. We got most of them out, but there's quite a few that's it's just, just no help. 2,200 yards of it comes down. All the failed sections are in fill. It remains standing at the precise margin where the fill ends and natural terrain begins. And in the marina, it's all over in 15 seconds, from buckled sidewalks to crumpled buildings. The price of that 15 seconds came to $7 billion and 62 lives. And the reason we're replaying all this is because seismologists expect the next big quake centered closer to the Bay Area to be 50 times more powerful than Loma Prieta. Even after Loma Prieta, it's hard to imagine that what happened in Kobe could happen here. Hard to imagine a famous skyline will ever change. But the reason the view from Russian Hill looks like this today is because it looked like this from the same spot in 1906. How could they have imagined that the Victorians lining California Street in 1900 would be ashes in their mouths six years later? And never in their wildest dreams could they imagine the same view of California Street in 2004. Who knows what this will look like a century from now? Or for that matter, next week.
Welcome back. I'm science editor Brian Hackney, and thanks for watching. There's one more thing. The point of this whole show has been to make you aware of the fact that we are surrounded by earthquake faults in the Bay Area and to be prepared for when the inevitable next one hits. And to that end, ABAG has put together an excellent website, and you should visit it for tips on what to do to get ready and for what to do when the quake hits. There is one more thing. Seismologists estimate there's a two in three chance of a major quake in the Bay Area in the next three decades. Usually two out of three ain't bad, except when it comes to earthquakes, and that ain't good. From above Hayward, I'm science editor Brian Hackney. Thank you for watching. So you don't worry about it? No. What's going to be? Why worry? What's going to be will be. Is we're all in God's hands. I mean, we're in God's hands, but you still got a new foundation. Oh, yes. Okay, so... And a it, new roof, because it leaked. <laughs>